and by your word lord heal us this morning enrich us this morning enlighten us this morning and impact us with grace today in jesus name i said in jesus name god's unfailing way to success part four Amen. This is the fourth in the series. And it's important for us to always go over and over, hence the summary that I did for you. You see, the truth is this. Most times you don't hear once and get it. That's why the Bible says faith comes by hearing. It's a continuous process. Are you following me? Acts chapter 20 and verse 20. Hear what Paul says. How and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you but i've showed you and i've taught you publicly and from house to house twenty there are things that are profitable for you. There are things that are profitable for you. Paul said, I didn't keep them back from you. I keep teaching you from house to house, publicly, everywhere. Because until you get it, it cannot profit you. Peter said in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 1, this second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 1. Wala Jochwe, Ahun, Yemis of Lachumalik, Ichi, Yuletanya Tunat, Bekadusan, Nebiat, Kadmo, Yetabalonkal, Bahareta Chachu. Where did you read? Second Peter. Not Peter. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 1. Oh, it's a bit different. Okay. I keep reminding you, Paul says. Remembrance. I'm writing to you again just to remind you. That's how we work with the word of God. We have to keep going over and over and over and over and over until the proofs show. Are you following me? It is a process. And from what God has shown me, we will keep going through process. You not only need instruction of scripture, but also to understand the reason behind it. Many of us hear the instructions of scripture. Walk in love. Pray for your enemies. Give. Love your wives. But you see, you need to go beyond that to understand. Do you understand me? The, the behind of the matter. So I pray today, may the Lord give you understanding. Because it is this understanding that will increase the importance of obeying those instructions. If all I just tell you is give and it shall be given back to you. Love your wife. Mr. But I didn't go to stress for you to understand why and the process of it. You are not going to be committed. 
Do you understand me? Until I begin to teach you, then you understand when you sow seed. Are you following me? The ground will work on it, it will grow, then it will multiply. Oh, that if you love your wife, are you following me? You are loving yourself. Do you understand me? The understanding of it helps your obedience to, to it. Selezino, Bejo Chachu alone, Zer, Bemizer, Betgiazer, Beklo, Buzu, and Demihon, Mr. Chachum demo, Bemito, Betgiademo, Wedenanta, Yamel Kamnegatamel Zemetal. You cannot receive the promise if you don't understand it. You cannot receive the promise if you don't understand it. That's why, sorry, go ahead. Jesus will say some things openly. Everybody had. Including the disciples, right? They had. But then when they get back inside, they will come to him. That thing you said, we had you, but we don't understand. What do you mean? Do you understand me? Then he will explain it to them. That's the place of understanding. And when you have desire to understand, then you begin to experience it. And most times when you want to understand anything, you have to begin from the beginning. Do you understand me? If you don't begin from the beginning, you won't get it. And that's why I want you to take these teachings seriously because it is actually taking things from the beginning. Let's start from the fundamental law of Scripture. There's a fundamental law of Scripture. Are you following me? What is fundamental in America? Huh? Meseret. Uh, the Meseret means many things. Uh -huh. It's only fundamental. Can't you look for the right one like this? Okay, let's go ahead. Now, you have to understand from the beginning of the process. The kingdom of God operates on the principle of sowing and reaping. It's a fundamental law of scripture. It's not just about money, it's about everything. Are you following me? You are going to see what I'm about to show you this morning. That is the fundamental law of scripture. We read from Mark chapter 4 right now, right? The parable of the sower. But Jesus made a statement in verse 13. Verse 13, Mark chapter 4. I want you to hear what he says. He said, Know ye not this parable? How then will you know all parables? Mark 4, verse 13. Did you hear that? That if you don't know this parable, you can't know the other ones. What is the parable? The parable of sowing and reaping. We just read it, right? If you don't understand, first, verse 13. Allah chom, ye misalia taukumen, and that is misalia on hulu taukutalachu. Do you understand what I'm saying? Jesus said, if you don't understand this parable, how do you want to understand others? That means this is the parable of all parables. You have to understand this one first before you can understand any other thing. And what is the parable about? It's about the principle, the fundamental principle of the kingdom, which is the principle of sowing and reaping. You will not understand about the kingdom because if you don't understand this parable, that's what I'm saying. This is the parable that lays the groundwork for every other one. This parable. So when you get home today, read that parable again. The parable of the sower. Are you following me? And we're going to continue on it right now. Just listen carefully. The Lord give you understanding. First, know that the heart of man 
is the production center. Everybody touch your heart. I know you somebody, I know Mr. Taiwo is the only one going to one corner. This is where we touch. <laughs> you know the mole bachin yemam recha botano. Listen to me very carefully because that's why we are making effort to do all these things. You will understand it today. Your heart is like the ground. Everything comes from the ground. You go to the desert, nobody wants to live there because it cannot produce. Your heart is the production center. And the seed is the word of God. And by extension, your words. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? If you want your life to change, sow the seed of what you want in your heart. The seed is the word. Verse 14, read. Jesus said what? The sower soweth. What did he sow? The word. What did he sow? So? And all of us we are playing with the word. The word is the ultimate seed. Are you following me? The sower soweth the word. Where did he sow it? He saw it into the heart and we are going to see it. The seed is the word of God. And by, by extension, it means words are what? Seeds. Words are seeds. Words are seeds. And I'm going to show you the mystery today. Jesus is Lord. Now look at verse 15. You will see something here today. You know, the parable talks of different categories. Of the seed is the same, but the heart was different. You know the parable. You, you, that shows you where the production center is. How effective your production center is determines what you produce. Now listen to me. Verse 15, read it. Verse 15, Satan read it. As the sower was sowing, right? He met some which are by the wayside. He said, These are they that when they have heard. What is this? Who is speaking? Now listen carefully. He said, Those by the wayside are those that they come to church. Let's believe that they, the word is preached. But Satan comes immediately. Immediately. And take the word away that was sown where? Are you following me? Jesus said, you come to church. You are at home. The word is preached to you. That is like seed being sown to you. But then, what happens? Immediately Satan came and take the word. That's why many people you preach in church. Before, they enjoy the preaching, but before they leave that door, they are forgotten. That's very serious. Are you following me now? We don't understand this thing. He said, Satan cometh immediately. Hmm? So you keep coming or going to church, but nothing is happening because the word, you understand me, he is not staying. That's why we make effort. I'm not joking when God led me to start doing this thing. You have to go over and go over and make sure the word enters before it can produce. Satan is targeting the word delivered to you to steal it. Satan demo yihinnin melkamun nante lai mihono neger kenante yisar kibbachwal. It's like you have a farm. Right? And you go to your farm, you put seed in the ground, you cover it. You went to, and somebody immediately sees you out of the farm, right? 
he goes to your farm, open the ground and remove the seed, cover the ground. And then what happens? Will you have anything in the farm? Yidem ba misale si galat andso zarin ba mizarabat gize kaza kazarto zor kala bola yanda mo nila meto zarin kawasar bola minim libakal aichilam. When they heard, when they have heard, Satan comment immediately. Satan wadi ayi metana. Let's read it from Matthew 13 verse 19. Matthew 13. Matthew 13 verse 19. The same thing. He said, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, you see the condition now. When he hears the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, which is Satan, and catches away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received the seed by the wayside. Yemangistin kal semto bemayas tawul hulu kufu yimetal belipu yetezera wanim in 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 natakal bemangadim lay yetezera yino. If you hear the word of God and don't understand, the devil will steal it. Yandendemo semta chuma tonu kona yandendemo talat kena ntsar kopachwan. But let's go back again. What do Allah name us? What is the seed? Zero men didn't know. What is the seed? What, where is the ground? It must be sown. Any seed sown that is not retained in the ground cannot produce. So that's why you see many people go to church but nothing is changing because they don't understand this principle. The seed is the word. You must make all the effort in your life to retain it. That Satan, you won't steal the word from me. Because when you have a guarantee if your seed remains, what will happen? It will produce. But if it does not remain, can it produce? That is the secret I'm showing us this morning. Jesus is Lord. Amen. If you don't act also on the word you have received, Satan will steal it. The word is the seed. Your heart is the ground. So you make, you make effort. Satan, you won't steal it from me anymore. You have to make effort. Go over. Get the city. Hear it, hear it, hear it. Until it was, enters. When it enters, you're on your way up. Uh, you know that's why the Bible says the entrance of the word. Do you understand me now? Because it has to enter. Look at the good ground. In the same Matthew 13 verse 23. Look at what happened. That's why your heart must be right. Are you following me? Your heart must be right with God. Your heart must be determined to receive the word of God. Now read. Verse 23. Yeah. Continue. He said, the one who hears the word and understands. Did you see the place of understanding now? The one who hears the word and understand it. Understand it. For example, you go to school. Everybody went to school one time or the other. You have maybe 30 students in a class, right? One teacher, right? They all had the same thing. But you will know who truly had when it's time for exam. You get my point? Those who had and understood will pass. Those who had everything the teacher was saying but don't understand, they will get F10. You, you understand what I'm saying? That's, that's it. It's the same. It's, that's why I said that law is the fundamental law. That's why Jesus said, if you don't get how this thing is, you won't get any other thing. So you, you, you work on yourself for the world to do what? To enter. It's the effort you make. Because the heart is the production center, just like the ground. Are you following me? 
if the seed stays in the ground, አሮችን በሚያስተምርበት ጊዜ ካስተማረ ደሞ ፈተና በሚሰጥበት ጊዜ ያ የተረዱት በውስጣቸው ያን የትምርቱን ግንዛቤ ያስቀምጡ ሰዎች ያልፋሉ ሌሎች ደሞ ያንን ደሞ የሰሙት የሰሙት ደሞ ያልመለሱት ደሞ ይወድቃሉ ያ ደሞ ያ ልባችን ደሞ ያ ማምረቻ ቦታ ስለሆነ ያንን መልካም ነገር በማድረግ ማወቅ መታውቃለባችሁ that's why jesus described different grounds ስለዚህ ነው ኢየሱስ ክርስቶስ በተለያየ ሁኔታ መሬት ብሎ የገለጸው this way you get to read that parable again there are grounds with stony hearts stones you know any farmer we go to his farm first what will he do first he doesn't sow seed first though. he prepares the ground first right removes the stones remove everything get the ground that is a lot of effort ስለዚህ ነው ገበሬው ዘር ከመዝራቱ በፊት ማንኛውንም አይነት ድንጋይ ወይ ሌላ ሌላ ተለያየ ነገር ዘር እንዳያፈራ የሚከለክሉ ነገር ከመሬት ላይ ያን ነገር ያነሳና መሬትን በተደላደለ ሁኔታ ለመዝራት ያዘጋጃል some grounds have thorns that choke the harvest do you understand me how many of us have friends families they do everything except when you talk about your church you understand me they don't want you to bring down when they are choking you <laughs> eh sunday morning they say we have family meeting You say no I'm going to church church for what? They are choking you are friends. You go around them all they are talking is trash, negativity. They are choking you. You you you, you understand me? All these things matter because your heart is the production center. The seed must come in the seed of the word. I will tell you later of your words for he to produce. Selezino ndama yesemachu nege ndatonu begwadenya bebese betelayi huneta ያ ደሞ በውስጣቸው የተዘራው ዘር እንዳይበቅል የሚከለክሉ ብዙዎች አሉ ስለዚህ ያ ልባችሁ ደሞ መልካም ዘር የሚዘራበት የማምረቻ ቦታ ስለሆነ ልባችሁ መጠበቃ አለባችሁ it is the soil or the ground that we produce what you plant ያ ደሞ የሚዘሩትን የሚያበቅለው መሬት ነው so you sow the seed of the word of god and your words i will explain that later ያንን ነው በውስታቸው ያንን የእግዚአብሔርን ቃል መዝራት ያለባችሁ how do we sow into our hearts ያንን ደሞ እንዴት ነው ምንዘራው በልባችን by speaking በመናገር ነው by doing what by doing what by doing what by speaking በመናገር ነው መዝራት ያለብን speaking the word ያንን ቃል በመናገር speaking with our words ያንን ቃል በመናገር romans 10 verse 8 rome i want you to get this cd and listen to it over and over because your life is changing today yinde mo kesemachu zare hiwotachu ikeyeral he said he's talking of the word of faith the word is nigh thee look at it even in thy what and again in thy mouth and heart did you see the two <laughs> in your mouth and in your heart in your mouth it goes into your heart and faith will emerge neger gin min ilal baaf belibim hono qalu qarbol lahal yihin yemin sabko yemnetin qal no the word must be first in your mouth you know አሉ ባነበተቻችን ላይ then it goes into your heart where will live where the wisdom go you know you have two ears not this this is one because they work together right you have the inner ear do everybody talk out talk but don't speak out do you hear yourself or not if i say my name is what did you what did i say you didn't hear but i know what i said i heard inside <laughs> Do you understand me now? There is an hina here. When you keep speaking the word or the words you speak, your hina here picks it into your spirit man. Are you following me now? That's how we sow the seed of the word. Yanin demo yemitnagerut nqal beustachu yallo libachu yanin isemanna yikebelawal. God has designed it in such a way that the words you speak is picked up by your hair and deposited in your heart to work on it 
እግዚአብሔር ደሞ ይህን ነገር ሲያደርግ ያንን የሰማችሁት ነገር ወደ ውስጥ ገብቶ ከውስጥ ደሞ ወደ ውጭ እንዲወጣ ነው ያንን ነገር ያደረገው that is why words are powerful ያንን ነው ባይለኛ ማን ማውቅ ያለብን was spoken by someone else don't have as much effect on your life as the one you speak it can affect you but it doesn't have as much you understand me as the words you speak do i am tinagaru no nante melso minagaro now you understand it this way now when the bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of god do you understand me see now wait wait that means you keep hearing it when you keep as you are hearing it is going to where your heart and faith will emerge do you understand me now you have to keep hearing it but i tell you one secret your heart receive the word faster when it is hearing it from you so you understand why the bible say you keep speaking the word it will answer the secret is the more you are saying it the more is going you are planting the seed and the ground will work on it for your harvest emnet demo kemesmat no mesmatum ke egziaber qal yan demo yemes yesemachu neger beustachu metkel allebachu look at this proverbs 18 verse 20 misale 18 kaya proverbs 18 verse 20 misale 20 a man sorry a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth and with the increase of his lips shall it be filled read it proverbs 18 verse 20 yeso hod yeso hod kafu fre imolal kemferum kemiyaferaw yitegwal the belly is the spirit you know jesus said out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water when you hear that in scripture he's talking of your spirit man he's talking of your heart you understand me now and a man's heart shall be satisfied with the fruit of what because what you are saying is going as seed into your heart and look at the second part and the increase of his lips shall it be filled so whatever you are saying will define you selezi yeso hod kafu fre imolal kemferum kemiyaferawum itegwal are you getting it clearly if you don't like how your life is change what you are saying if you don't like how your life is change what you are saying because those are the seeds <laughs> can you sow coffee because i know you drink coffee a lot and reap uh uh orange is it possible can you sow coffee seed and reap orange uh, you don't like coffee but it's coffee you are sowing what will you reap do you get my point you don't like orange but you keep sowing orange you said i want apple but you are sowing orange what are you going to reap orange so if you don't like how your life is change what you are saying yanno mon yallebachu nanta hon ya yemitzerutin zer meqeyer allebachu ya yemizeru zer behiyotachu melkam yemihonon zer no በውታቹ ለመዝረት ያለባቹ ቡናን የዘራሶ ብርቱካንን አይጠብቅም ወይ ብርቱካንን የዘራሶ ቡናን አይጠብቅም ስለዚህ ያ የምዘሩ ዘር በውስጣቹ ላይ ተጽኖ ስለሚያመጣ ያንን መልካሙን ዘር ነው በውስጣቹ ለመዝረት ያለባቹ and is a process ይሄ ደሞ ሂደት ነው the more you say አፋቹ እንዲላል it goes into your heart ወደ ውስጣቹ ይገባል the more is in your heart you speak it out yan demo wede ust yegeba wede ust wede ust tawtellachu he gets stronger is going in again you know just like a farmer does a farmer farm once in his life hmm does a farmer farm one time if he plants now right after a few months harvest what does he do again he plant more again maybe he planted 20 now he got harvest he's not going to plant 20 again he's going to plant like 40 before you know it his farm is increasing that's the same with us the more you are saying it it goes in it comes out you are saying it so your faith keeps growing and getting stronger by the day selezi no gaberewm ezika yizeral zaga demo yachidal ezika yizeral demo zaga ya demo yemizeraw na yemiyachidaw liyunet allem tin yizeral bizu demo yisebesbal enante beustachu demo ya yemizerut melkam neger keustachu demo yota na lenante melkam yewnilachwal now the mystery is this yino ministry 
whatever you are saying, you are sowing into your heart. Whether God's words or Satan's words, they are seeds and they will produce. You know, me know, man, in your own, and under your miserable, milk, come, honey, kufu, boast at you, got to ya, miser, moat at a silly maker, bezalematin got the bachu. I cannot be sick. Any other time, even when you see sickness like this, and you are still saying, I cannot be sick, don't worry, because what you are doing is sowing the seed. People will laugh at you, right? Sowing the seed. Until it begins to reflect. Somebody says, oh, this is my sickness. What is he doing? He is sowing the seed. Are you following me now? Oh, there is no job in this country. He is sowing the seed. So is it that you are saying God's words? Or the devil's words? They are seeds. And whatever seed you sow, what will happen? Genesis 8.22 Seed time and harvest shall not cease as long as the heart remains. That's why I say it's the fundamental law of scripture. Are you following me now? Whatsoever a man sows, that he shall also reap. So through this parable of the sower, God is telling us how the kingdom of God operates. Are you if following me? It works by sowing of seeds. We plant the words in our hearts. The heart produces what is planted. So people who play at receiving the word of God don't know what they are missing. Are you following me? They will not have what it takes to, produce, to sow the right seeds. Jesus is Lord. And you know one thing? No matter what you want, the heart or the ground has no capacity to deliver to you except what you sow in it. You understand what I mean? You say, oh, I want to be rich, but you are sowing the seed of poverty. You can never be. The heart, the ground, you, you understand me? The ground, right? It cannot change the result. The ground will only produce for you what you sow in it. If you sow orange and you want apple, the ground will say, oh, okay, he wants apple. Let me give him apple. You understand me? So it is the seed you sow. The ground is only organized by God to produce the harvest for you. That is the principle of the kingdom. Look at uh, Mark 426. Jesus said, so is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground. That's the principle. <laughs> Are you following me now? He said, and he, 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 he sleep at day and night and he know it know how. Your job is what? Make sure you are casting the right seed in your heart. It will answer for you. Stop sowing seeds of trouble. Stop sowing seeds of sickness. Stop sowing seeds of lack or failure. And how do you stop that? Stop talking sickness. Stop, stop talking failure. You cannot be talking sickness and you walk in health. It's not going to be possible. You cannot be talking lack and, and walk in prosperity. It's not possible. You cannot be going about complaining about your business and it will work. It's not possible. 
Are you following me? Don't mind what is happening. I've told you that many times. Say what you want. Keep saying it the way you want it. That's how it works. Yeah, Everything no. produces after its own kind. Yeah, no. To change your harvest, what do you do? Change your seed. If you don't like what you are seeing, eh? change your seed. That's how it goes. Change your seed. Change your seed. If you don't like your harvest, change your seed. You see, the mystery is this. You know, Mr. We are not ordinary. We are created in the image of God. And in, the, and in the likeness of God. Man is a spiritual being. Are you hearing me? Man is like God. God is a creator. He's a manufacturer. Do you understand me? Man is like God. So God operates by what? His words. And everything he says produces for him. It's the same with man. Do you understand? And the spirit of man, now when you get saved, the Holy Spirit dwells in your spirit, not in your body. We don't encounter God with our body or with our mind. It's with our hearts. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him what? In spirit and in truth. So you must understand that principle. And know that whatever you will produce must come from your spirit man. From your heart. Are you following me? So when you are sowing the seed, you are sowing it into your heart and it will produce. So let's do you know, you this church will go forward. Amen. This church will increase and multiply. It will increase as a city without walls. Amen. We keep speaking it. We are sowing the seed. A time will come, you just enter here, you won't find it. I've been saying it, you will soon see it. Now, now let me show us another very important aspect of what we are talking about. Come with me to Hebrews chapter 1. <laughs> this is how you engage supernatural help by the spoken word. Amen? The Bible talks of the ministry of angels. What's angels in Amharic? Yes. The Bible talks of the ministry of angels. How many people want the angels of God to work for them here? Can I see your hand? Oh, you want the angels working for you. Fine. But let's say it. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 13 and 14. Abraham, Abraham is and Watch very carefully. He said, but to which of the angels said thee at any time, sit down at my right hand, I will make thy enemies thy shoes. That is talking of Jesus. That is, Jesus is superior to angels. That's what he's saying. Are you following me? Jesus is what? Superior to angels. Go to verse 14. He said, are they not, that's angels, all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be hearers of salvation? Read it. Hebrews 1, 13 and 14. Who are the heirs of salvation? No, who are the heirs of salvation? We. We are the heirs of God, heirs of salvation. Angels are sent to minister to us. They are our servants. Are you hearing me? I know most of you are orthodox before. You worship angels. God bless you. I'm not against you. But I'm just showing you what the Bible says. You understand me? He said, are they not ministering spirits? Ministry means servants. Are you following me? They are waiting on you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Your angel, I'm going to show you everything here today. The angels are sent to be on standby for you. But they don't do anything until you engage them. Say what I say. Selezi melak tat sirachom indinno innantan liyagelegelu atagebochachu lay komwal. 
Look at Revelation 22 verse 9. John, in that revelation, saw an angel. And naturally, all of us, we want to worship. We naturally worship angels, right? Once you see an angel, you understand me? Naturally. And the angel said to John, uh-uh, uh-uh, don't do that. Don't worship me. I am your servant. Read Revelation 22 verse 9. Do you understand me? Did you get it? Revelation 22 verse 9. Then said he unto me, See that thou do it not, for I am what? Did you see it? See that thou do it not, I am thy fellow servant and of your brethren, not only you, of the saints. And their brethren, the prophets, and of them which keeps the saints of this book. The, are you getting it now? And those who worship God. I am what? Read, please. Ursum in that tadar go to tenkak, cantagar, con de mochim, canabiat gar, yezin must have called, camita bukugar, avre barianin, leg zabir sigur nyal. Don't worship me, I am your servant, and of your brethren. Are you following me? And of those that keep the word of God. They are here to serve us. Come with me to Psalm 91, verse 7. Your angels are waiting for you. Psalm 91 verse 7. He said, A thousand, let me be sure I'm correct. Yeah. A thousand shall fall at thy side. All of us know that scripture, right? And ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come near you. Verse 8. Only with thy eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Trouble all around you. Sickness all over. Confusion, failure, everything. He said, but it will not. Now, verse 11. Kasran Jemro. Verse 11. Watch everybody. For he shall what? Give his angels charge. He, that means he will charge them. And you know you charge by your words, right? He shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all thy ways. Verse 12. That they shall bear thee up in their hands. Amen. Lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. That's why all the crisis and calamity don't come near you. Because your angels are taking that charge. And all through scriptures and in our present lives, we have seen amazing angelic interventions. We have seen angels walk, right? Daniel, the Lord has sent his angel and he shot the mouth of the lions. Peter was in prison. The Bible says the angel went there and brought him out. All the doors opened by themselves. The angels are still here today. They are here for you. They are here for me. Because we are the heirs of salvation. But how do we engage them? How do we engage them? How do you get your angels to work for you? Psalm 103, verse 20. Verse 20. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, right? That do, number one, his commandment, hearkening unto the voice. Of his word. Psalm 103, verse 20. Angels do his commandments. You can't make your angel do anything outside of the commandments of God. Because they are not really for you, they are for you because God sent them. He has given them the child word when, but they will not do what is not of God. They do his commandments. And how do they do it? 
This word, hearkening, that means respond. They respond unto the voice of his word. What do they respond to? Voice. Voice. Are you getting it now? Voice. Who gives voice to the word of God? You. You have to give voice. You understand me now? You give voice to his word. The angels will respond. They are waiting to hear from you. Are you following me? You give voice to God's word. That's why you must have his word. That's why you must keep speaking his word. Are you following me? You keep speaking his word. No weapon that is fashioned against me shall prosper. You keep saying it, even when there is no trouble. Every tongue that rises up against me in judgment, I condemn. Whatsoever I do shall prosper. You have to keep declaring his word because the angels are here. Are you following me? Waiting for his word that you give voice to. To carry it out for you. If you are speaking contrary to the word of God, they cannot work for you. They cannot. They, are, they, they, they do his commandments. So every time you are waking up, you are on the street, you are declaring, Blessed be God. I have given, so it must be given back to me. You are declaring his word. No sickness can, 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 can hurt me. You are declaring his word. Because he himself took my pains and my infirmities. I'm free from debt because Jesus nailed my debt to his cross. You are what? Give him voice to his word. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You are declaring, you are giving what? Voice to his word. Uh, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. You are giving voice to his word. So the angels ensure, it ha it, it, the angels carries it out on your behalf. Look at your business. Business Speak, give voice to the word of God. Concerning. Whatever I do shall prosper. That's Psalm 1, verse 3. Because I follow the Lord. This business will not fail. It will prosper me. You give voice. You give voice. You give voice to his word. But if you plant negative words that you are speaking, angels don't do his commandment. They do, sorry, angels only do his word. So you gather the seeds just like any farmer. What do farmers do first? They go gather good seeds, right? They even look at everything. No, no, this is a good seed. <laughs> Are you following me? You gather the seeds. When you plant the seeds, you keep declaring it. You will not fail. You do the word and give voice to it. And as you are acting on the word of forgiveness, of giving, of walking in love, you come to discover that you begin to live a prosperous life by the seeds that you have sown through the spoken word. Now I give you three examples. So There's a story in the Bible of the Lord Jesus Christ in Luke chapter 8 from verse 12. We may not read because we know Jesus told his disciples, <coughs> excuse me, 
Jesus told his disciples, let us go on to the other side. Right? And they said, okay. And they entered into the boat. And he went downstairs and he was sleeping. All of us know the story. And all of a sudden, Satan came with the storm. What did Jesus say? Mm -mm. Forget about that. What did he say to his disciples first? Mm -mm. He said to them, let us go on to the other side. Not let us go and die in the ocean. I'm just showing you how it works. Right? Let us go on to the other side. But then the devil came. And then what did the disciples say? They ran to him. Master, we are dying. <laughs> he didn't say you are dying. He said we are going to the other side. Satan has stolen the word from them. So all they can now talk is unbelief. And you know Jesus immediately said in verse 14, where is your faith? That is to say, I told you we are going to the other side. Why are you talking of death? Where is your faith? That's exactly the picture I'm showing you now. Where is your faith? All they needed to be saying is, we are not dying here. Jesus has already said we are going to the other side. Storm, you are wasting your time because we won't die here. We are holding on to that word. But no, their heart failed them. Okay, please, let's read. Say everything I said first, then we'll read. If you remember. Verse 12. Are you following me? Listen very carefully. Every word of God that is given to you, Satan will come and check. Can I collect it from him? Can I steal it from her? Are you following me? Look at verse 14. Read. And verse 12. Do what are you showing me? What did I call? 22, verse 22, sorry, verse 22. Now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples and he said unto them, let us go over onto the other side of the lake. Let's go over. Did you see that? Let's go over. And when the storms came, verse 24, and they came to him and were walking and saying, Master, Master, we perish. Did you see what they said? They can't hold on to that word again because they allowed the devil to steal that word. Master, we perish. And then he arose, he rebuked the wind. Did Jesus say, let us go and die in the ocean? What did he say? Let's go to the others. That's the word. He saw that seed in their hearts, but they lost it. The next thing they said was, <laughs> we perish. And then Jesus, now look at verse 25, everybody. Verse 25. What did Jesus ask them? The first thing Jesus said to them is, where is your faith? Are you getting it now? Where is your faith? Why are you talking of perishing when I say you are going over? Where is your faith? The storms will come. We have said that before. Are you following me? If you read the, if you build your house on the foundation, he said the storms will come. But whether that storm will overcome you is a different thing altogether. You hold on to his word. In the midst of the storm, you will go through the storm. Jesus said, where is your faith? Now, I want to show you something. Say, say that one first, all those ones I said. Because it looks like you are enjoying me. Ersum yet no. Now watch. What is the next statement? And they being what? Afraid. Did you get it? Fear took over where faith should be. Fear took over where their faith should be. That's why they were sinking. The problem is not the storm. The problem is their faith. Do you understand me now? The problem is never your, the storms you are going through. The problem is 
your faith? Have you replaced your faith with fear? That's the problem. And they've been afraid. So you mu- it's either faith is there or fear. So you must fight fear to establish your faith. So let's do know, yeah, in Nanta Chigger Sahon, Maabalu Sahon, Wem Gorfu Sahon, Alunafal Sahon, yeah, in Nanta Busta to Yemizeru Zerno, Yan Melkam Zer Kazarat Yadamo, Nanta Leon Bachum. Don't let Satan steal the seed in your heart. The word of God is the seed. Hold on to it. Number two. Number two example. The woman with the issue of blood. We know the story. The woman with the issue of blood. Amen. All of us know. The Bible says, when she heard of Jesus. You remember? And hearing brings what? What does hearing do? It makes the word into your heart and faith. So it all begins from what you hear. When people don't pay attention to hearing the message of the word of God, they are hurting themselves because nothing is being sold. Are you following me? When she heard, she said. When she heard, you remember the woman with the issue of blood? When she heard, she what? She said. She said, if I just touch his garment, I will behold. Are you getting? It's the same principle. She said, doesn't mean she said it once. So I'm sure she said it over and over and over and over. And then she went. When she acted, only her power flowed into her. All the people touching, nothing flowed. You remember? So that is the principle. Let me finish. You say it together. She heard. You must keep hearing right. Because when you hear, are you following me? The seed is sown. And when the seed is sown, you what? You speak. When she heard of Jesus, she said, if I may but just touch the hem of his garment, I shall be whole. Then she went and she touched. Many people were touching, but they never heard and never said. So nothing flowed to them. Can you imagine people touching Jesus physically and they didn't get healed? Because they did not operate that principle. So you hear well, you sow the seed, you speak it, and you hacked. Preach. ስለዚህ ያቺም ደም ይፈሳት የነበረች ሴት ብዙዎቹ ኢየሱስ ክርስቶስን እየተከተሉ ባሉበት ጊዜ እሷም ያንን የኢየሱስ ክርስቶስ መልካም ልን ዘምታ እኔ የልብሱን ጫፍ እንኳን በነካ እፈወሳሉ በማለት ያንን እምነት ይዛ ሄደች ከዛ የልብሱን ጫፍ በነካች ጊዜ ያ ደም ይፈስ የነበረው ወዲያው ቆመ ነምበር 3 how many of us know the story of david and goliath First Samuel chapter 17. Time is going, so are we paraphrasing. Everybody was afraid, right, of Goliath. David came, let no man's heart fail. Let nobody be afraid. afraid. Because where fear is, faith is not. And David told Saul, your servant will go and fight these uncircumcised Philistines. Fine. And he told us the basis. I've worked with God. God did this for me, right? Then everybody watch. <coughs> David killed Goliath before Goliath died. Huh? He killed Goliath before Goliath died. You know why? He began to say, Today, I will cut off your head. Right? You remember? Today, I will walk on you. He had no weapon, no physical sword. But the Bible says, the sword of his mouth. Talking about Jesus. The sword is in our mouth. Are you following me now? I will cut off his head. Today, I will kill you. I will march upon you. That's where he killed Goliath. He only acted on it because when you give voice to his word, the angel will help you carry them out. But he said all those things first. Do you understand me now? So your speaking is so important. Stop speaking unbelief. Stop speaking fear. Declare what you want to happen. It will happen for you when you keep your faith at it. Summarize everything. David na Goliad baza bota lai. David Goliad na gal la lobloosil Goliad yau betam jagna na thillik sona pera. David mo thinnish lij na pera na be amnet ani anten gal la lo anget na kort la lobloo yan na amnet ni zo hedo Goliad ni ashne fau. Can you imagine David said today I will take your hair from you and he has no physical sword. How is he going to do that? <laughs> you remember? David said, today, I will cut off your hair and feed it, feed it, feed it to birds. 
That's exactly what happened. Because he kept what? Declaring it. Yannin kalit na garoni angatin no. Mika na tisabulu yannin yamnetun kal kagzaveri yuasadon. But look at Goliad lay in the Mnet Kalsinagar, what your Goliad Teratoba David would take and get him to take an attack. David killed the Goliath by speaking his faith. David Goliath in a gatello, Yem Nathan Kalbam and Nagarno. That's why Jesus said, Yes, if you shall what? Say to this mountain. If you shall say to this mountain, and don't doubt, be removed. Be cast into the sea. He said it shall happen. If you can only say it by faith because you have sown the seed of faith, are you following me? And you are declaring the seed, he said it will happen for you. So let's know Jesus Christ was born to save us. Nagar, I'm not finished. Kalla, in Tararatan, Kalla, we're just a teacher. Garum, come back to you. You hold in that chal. He killed Goliath by the sword of his mouth. That's what the Bible talks about Jesus in Revelation 2.16. He said the sword of his mouth. <laughs> Where is your sword? In your mouth. Huh? The sword of his mouth. Jesus is Lord. Finally, I want to show you a scripture. Psalm 45. Verse 1. <laughs> Psalm 45 verse 1. He says, my heart is indicting a good matter. I speak of things which I have seen as touching the king. My tongue is the pad of a ready writer. Did you hear that? That's the summary. Everything I've just taught is there now. He said, my heart my what? That's the ground. It's indicting a good matter. It's excited. Such seed has been sown in it. I speak of things which I have made of, as touching the king. I have heard of the king. Who is the king? I said, who is the king? Who is the king? Aile Salasie. Uh, so why don't you answer me? Are you following me now? That's what he said. I've heard. I'm excited in God. And then my tongue begins to write my story. Read it again. Libbe melkam in negar afelleka, en Israel, den gusun nagarallo, and the beti and the fet ants afi burno. Ma your tongue is your pen. And the betachu demo burno. Write your whole story. Yannin Yerasachun Nobody to write it for you. Say what you want. Say it the way you want it. Let your tongue write your story of success. Let your tongue write your story of prosperity and health. By your tongue, slay your giant. Slay, kill your giant. He said, my tongue is the pen of a ready writer. My tongue. My tongue. My tongue. Are you following me now? Speak well of yourself. Speak well of your business. Speak well of your wife. Speak well of your husband. Speak well of your children. Speak well of your health. Speak well of your children. Are you following me? Your tongue is the pain. Your tongue is the pain of a ready writer. Today your story is changing. From today you keep going forward. From today you will not know sickness. From today you will not know lack. 
As you desire it, it will happen for you. Where you go, the favor of God will speak for you. You will be distinguished among your colleagues. Before any need comes to you, the supply will be waiting for you. Amen. Jesus is Lord. Amen. I say Jesus is Lord. Amen. On Wednesday, I will talk on building a faith image in your spirit man. Because you have to build it. Say it even if you won't come. Say it for those who will come to here. Image of faith. Image of prosperity. Because you have to, there must be a change on the inside before there can be a change on the outside. Begin to talk wealth. Talk abundance. Talk health. Talk success. Talk business expansion. Talk great jobs. Are you following me? Your tongue is the pen of a ready writer. So what do you want of the Lord in your life this week? Rise up on your feet and begin to say the same. Write that story. Write that story now. Write that story this week. Say it. Don't keep quiet. Say it. Say what you want. Declare it. Speak it out. So begin to speak. God is hearing you. The angels are side by side with you now. Ready to carry out your instruction. This week you will not suffer. Say it. That job you have been crying for will locate you this week. They will call for you and give to you. Your debt begins to crash this week. Speak out as the children of the Most High God. Speak to your life. Speak to your health. My health is springing forth speedily. I am made whole. There is no sickness in me. There is no failure in me. Because by his stripes I have been healed. This week, amazing increase for me. This week, amazing enlargement for me. This week, amazing prosperity for me. They will call for me this week and they will give to me. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We give you praise. Blessed be your name forever. We celebrate you, King of Kings. We celebrate you, the mighty God. You are world the mighty God. Thank you everlasting Father. In Jesus mighty name. Lord I decree here today increase on every side for everyone here today. None will reduce here. None will suffer loss here. Sickness will not dwell in your bodies. Whatever sickness or pain in your body, I curse it today in the name of Jesus. I speak the favor of God into your life. That this week they will call you and they will give to you. That this week, that which your heart desires shall be given to you. In the name of Jesus. You will not suffer loss this week. Amen. You will not know pain this week. Whatever you touch will answer for you this week. Where they have refused you, they will call you and give to you this week. Where they have said no to you, they will call you and say, sorry, we made a mistake. It is yes now. Begin to increase. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. 
Amen. We give you praise. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Put your hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah.